Hello and welcome to this introductory Total Mix FX tutorial. We're going to look at some of the basic features in what is a very powerful tool. There is so much you can do with Total Mix FX, but you don't have to dive in headfirst on day one. Use as much or as little as you like, but once you're familiar with Total Mix FX, it will become an indispensable cornerstone of your studio. Today, we're going to look at how to route and mix audio using Total Mix FX how to configure channel settings, how to set up and use the control room, how to use the effects, and how to save your favorite settings to be recalled later. You'll find Total Mix FX on the Fireface UFX, the Fireface UCX, and on the Babyface. For this video, I'm using the Fireface UFX, as RME's flagship interface has the most features of all the Firefaces so when a feature present is not found on the UCX or the Babyface, I'll let you know. So let's look at routing in Total Mix FX. You can see in the main Total Mix window that you have three banks of faders. The top row corresponds to all the hardware inputs on the Fireface itself. The middle row is your software output so any output you have from say Logic, Cubase, iTunes, etc. The bottom row is all the physical hardware outputs on the Fireface. They are all labelled so you can see that these channels for example up here relate to the mic inputs on the Fireface. Mic 9, Mic 10, Mic 11, etc. These to the analog line outputs AN12, AN34, etc. And over here we have the digital outputs ADAT, AES. The same labeling is used on the outputs as well, as you can see down here. The routing in Total Mix is incredibly powerful. You can send anything to anywhere in any combination. Moreover, if you route a hardware input directly to a hardware output, this is done inside the Fireface without passing through the computer at effectively zero latency. Great for musicians to monitor while recording without hearing any delay that will be caused by traveling through the computer. So how does it work? Firstly, you need to choose an output destination to address. You can see that by clicking on outputs on the bottom row, you can highlight the one you want. Let's choose ADAT 1 and 2. To send signal to this output pair, it's really simple. Just raise the fader on the signal you want to send. So for example, we have some input on our microphone 9. To send that to ADAT 1 and 2, just raise the fader. Or just double click to toggle between 0 dB and minus infinity. You can pan this signal to the left or to the right to adjust the amount sent to ADAT1 or to ADAT2. You can see we're panned hard right here and we're only getting signal on ADAT2, the right hand channel of the ADAT12 pair. Likewise, you can raise any other faders from the hardware inputs or software outputs to send these to the selected output. So for example, I have some playback from Logic outputting in the middle row here. I can send that to ADAT1 and 2.
send any channels in any combination to your desired submix. I should add that the faders on all the input channels do not affect the level sent to your door, logic, cubase, etc. They only control the level routed onwards to your hardware outputs. When you've finished, just select the next output you'd like to address and repeat the process. So if we select ADAT 3 and 4, you'll see our routing is different, we can set up a mix as we like. The routing you already set up for ADAT 1 and 2 is not affected. We can switch back and view the routing here. So there you have it. Send anything to anywhere in any combination. And when sending hardware inputs directly to hardware outputs, do it with effectively zero latency. Let's take a look at individual channel settings. For example, a mic input. We've seen how the fader and the pan are used for routing. If you click on the spanner symbol, the settings panel will open up. Let's choose mic 11, for example. In here, you can turn on the phantom power. High impedance. For plugging a guitar straight in, for example. You can adjust the gain. You can invert the phase. You can configure the FX send. More on that later. We can also toggle between a stereo or a mono input. You can see here that the mic is set as a mono input at the moment, mic 11. If we click on stereo, you'll see mic 11 and mic 12 have combined. We now have a stereo channel with options for stereo width, mid side processing and ganged gain control. You can still access the individual gains by accessing the number rather than the knob. There are small differences in the settings depending on the type of channel you're looking at. So for example, with the line inputs, there is no gain setting, but instead an analog reference level. Let's look at analog five and six. Here you can see the reference level. Take a look at all the different types of channels and it'll be fairly self-explanatory. The outputs work in the same way, but have in addition a loopback button. By clicking on loopback, the signal from this output stereo pair will be sent directly to the software input. So for example, we could send our submix on ADAT 3 and 4 directly to the input of our recording software. Great if you want to record a specific submix. One of the best features of Total Mix FX is the control room. Here in the bottom right corner, this has all the functions of a standalone monitor controller that you would pay hundreds of pounds for separately. Out of the box, the main monitors are set as analog outputs 1 and 2, and headphones 1 and 2 are the two headphone outputs 
on the front of the UFX. With the UCX and with the Babyface, this is slightly different. You only have one headphone output. However, you can set any outputs you like to be defined as the main outputs or the headphone outputs. Simply click on the Assign drop down. In here, I can assign my main outputs to be digital channels. So for example, if you've got an external DAC, I can even select more headphone outputs and a second set of speakers. So if I wanted, for example, to use the eight line level analog outputs on the rear of the UFX as my headphone outputs, I could do that. Let's choose headphones three as analog five and six, for example. Once you set up your headphone outputs in the control room, you have complete control over many standard monitoring features, such as dim, recall, mono, talk back. You can cue from an external input. You can even mute the effects to get the dry signal only. A great feature is speaker B. I can assign a second set of monitors. Let's choose analog 7 and 8 for example. So now we have two sets of main monitors. I can switch between them quickly with a click of a button. Just hit speaker B. If I want to set up a talkback mic it's simple. Hit Options, Settings, select your talkback mic. Let's choose mic 10. Hit OK. And we have our talkback mic. You can send that to any outputs you like using the normal routing process. So for example, Let's send it to Headphones 1. Select Headphones 1 and raise the fader to the desired level. Now by hitting Talk Back, I can get a message to Headphones 1. External input allows you to cue your main outputs from an input, for example, the AES input, if we had a CD player hooked up. Select Options, Settings, and choose your external input. Let's have AES. By hitting external input, the signal from the AES channels is sent to the main monitors. Great for comping against a CD. On top of this, you have the Q button. All the outputs have a Q button. By hitting Q, the signal from that output is sent to the main outputs and all other routed signals to the main outputs are muted. So for example, if I want to check the signal on ADAT 1 and 2, click Q. That is now sent to the main outputs and nothing else. 